Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for the Global Learning Opportunities Week Travel Study presentation. Just a quick note, if you're just signing on, that this is a pre-recorded webinar and it'll be available with captioning on the on-demand section of our GLOW page. So just so you all know, this is a recorded session. If you do have questions the day that this is airing live in October on the 9th, you can feel free to be putting questions in the chat on YouTube. So we are actually here live, even though the video was pre-recorded, we are here answering questions. So just please just enter your questions as you think of them. There's a little time at the end of the presentation, however, not much. So just put the questions in as you think of them. So I just wanna welcome you again. We really appreciate your interest in UCLA Travel Study and we're really excited to let you know about all of our opportunities that we have coming up for 2024 and beyond. So this session today is to give you an overview of Travel Study and work through all the logistics related to the faculty-led summer programs at UCLA. Just as a little bit of housekeeping, this session will not cover any of the 101 related content. So if you have general questions about studying abroad at UCLA and the full range of options, we would recommend you actually go back to our GLOW homepage after this presentation to watch the 101 session. That will cover everything from start to finish about how to complete a study abroad program at UCLA. And that session is recorded, also airing on Monday the 9th and will be available from now on if you would like to check that out or revisit it later. Just a quick overview of what's covered in this presentation. We're going to give you a little information about the background behind travel study programs, what's included in the programs, as well as finances, how do you find enough scholarships and funding and self-fund your own study abroad experience through travel study. We'll give you more information about the logistics, how the travel study programs are different, and how you might be able to consider options to find the right program fit for you, not just academically, but in location and experience. We're going to go through a couple of sample programs just to give you a taste of what we have to offer. And then I think the most interesting part, you'll actually hear from two of your peers who are recent travel study ambassadors who participated in summer 2023 on two of our programs. We would recommend you stick around to the end just so you make sure you get your contact information for us. And then if there's any final lingering questions, we will be answering those in the chat. Just to give you a quick recap of the travel study team, um, obviously you saw me in the beginning of the video, but I have a team of four here together with you today. So it's myself, Danielle Samick, Associate Director, and the rest of the team will introduce themselves as they come on to cover their section. We all work with different programs based on either department or location, and we all collaborate together to put these programs together for you. So that's one of the benefits of travel study. You have dedicated staff who build and design these programs specifically for UCLA students. We're part of the International Education Office at UCLA, which is a one-stop shop. We cover everything, as mentioned, for study abroad through one unit. We also offer advising. There's one-on-one. -on -one. You can also do drop-ins. You can connect with our peers. We're often tabling around campus and doing different presentations. So plenty of opportunities to learn from us and engage with us if you wanna learn more. It's never too early to start planning is, is the message. If you want to watch more webinars this week, you can scan that QR code to pull up our website. There's presentations going on all the way through Thursday, and of course, they're all recorded. So if you want to view them later on or review, it's available to you. And with that, just to give you a brief overview, what is UCLA Travel Study? So as mentioned, these are faculty-led programs designed for UCLA students, but open to others. They are academic credit bearing, which is typically around eight to 10 units of UCLA credit. It's all designed for undergraduate level credit as well. They're a really unique way to both go abroad with a UCLA professor who's an expert in whatever field you might be studying, but it's also a good way to satisfy or work ahead towards degree requirements in the summer. I know not everyone does coursework in the summer, but if you wanna combine the best fit for you being travel plus actually learning your UCLA courses, then I would encourage you to look at travel study is a really good option. Most don't have prerequisites and you can really go as early as you wanted to even after your first year at UCLA all the way through your last year right before you graduate. You can extend graduation if you needed to and do travel study and then get your diploma at the end of the summer. So plenty of opportunities. It's very flexible. We also have locations all over the world and they typically last from three to five weeks. 
who can apply to travel study. So it's open to anyone. Like I said, there's limited prerequisites. The main instances where you might have to complete something specific before going would mostly be with the language requirements. So if there's a Spanish program and you need to complete a sequence requirement to be eligible, you would want to look into that early and make sure you plan for that course during the year ahead of your summer program. You don't have to meet all of the criteria by the time you apply, but you do need to finish those prerequisites before you travel. Our admission is first come first serve. So what this means is the timestamp that you submit your application really matters. It is highly competitive for certain programs, just in the sense that there's a limited capacity. And we typically ad admit students into the programs based on when they've completed the application. If there's a spot open to you, then it's yours. It's also open to all current college students. You don't have to just be from UCLA. So if you have a friend or a sibling who goes somewhere else and they wanna travel with you, this program is open to them. They just have to be at least 18, a high school graduate, and in good academic standing at their current institution. The application process is really simple. It can take just a few minutes to complete. Our first step is for you to review all the programs, compare, contrast, see what is the best match for you. Again, it could be based on academics. It could be a place you've never thought about traveling to and the topic really interests you or is a good career match for you. Once you narrow that down, and obviously with advisor help if needed, then you would go ahead and go in and do the application. This year, our priority registration window will be from November 16th through 30th. So we would recommend you save that on your calendar now, just so you don't miss the window. Uh, essentially after that first priority window, it'll just depend on whether any space is open for students. And again, that time step does matter, but if some programs aren't full after the priority window, it'll continue to be open for more enrollment until around March 22nd or whenever the program fills. Once you go ahead and do your online application then, if there is space available, you'll receive an invitation from our office to go ahead and go back in to claim your spot. The way you claim a spot is by paying the $300 non-refundable deposit, which is your first payment towards the program. It's not an application fee. We don't keep that. It's after you commit to the program, then you'll get that $300 credited towards your first program payment, which full payment is due later on. After you fill, fill out your application and submit it and have paid the $300 deposit, you will receive a confirmation email, and that's your record that now you're in, you're officially locked into your spot. The only thing to keep in mind is that in some limited cases, because our programs are built just for a specific number of students and we try to keep pricing low by building them to a minimum enrollment, there is an occasional case where a program may cancel if there's not sufficient enrollment. That's why, again, we encourage you to, to apply during that priority decision window. That way we have a good sense of how many people are interested and we can make sure that other students learn about the program so that it doesn't cancel. It never hurts, however, to tell a friend. So if you know someone else who wants to go or you think it's a really good option, uh, we appreciate the referrals. Strategy. So since it is competitive in some cases and it is first come first serve, could you apply for more than one? Not necessarily. And that's just because the majority of our programs are not competitive. Most of them, as long as you apply in that early window, you have a really good chance of getting into the program. I will say in a couple of cases, which we'll note on our program page, it could be a little bit more competitive. So even applying that first day can really matter for those particular programs. But again, we'll put a note on that page if it is competitive. Essentially, once you have confirmed your spot, then there's no need to necessarily apply for a backup. So if you are waitlisted temporarily and you're interested in another program, you can check in with our office. We can let you know if it seems like the waitlist is not moving. Once a program fills, especially for very popular global studies programs, for instance, it's possible that no one else from the waitlist will move on to that program. So if you know you have a backup, it's good to check in with us starting in January, February, and we can advise you whether it's in your best interest to switch to something else if you had a backup up, or whether we think that, you know, there isn't really another good option, you might as well just stay on the wait list and see what happens. The only time someone can apply to more than one program is if you're actually interested in participating in the two programs in the same summer. It's not super common, but every once in a while, someone has double major, maybe has two interests, or it's their last chance to go abroad and the two programs fit. So if there's no date conflicts and you are financially able to commit to both programs in full, including two $300 deposits, you can email us and we'll help you with the process. I'm going to give it a second just in case there's any questions about this at this point. So we have a second to catch up in the chat. 
Okay, and then after March 22nd, typically if there's any open spots, it's very unusual for us to be able to move more people into a program, but we will be in touch with you. So if you are waitlisted, we, we keep you updated throughout the process so you know what's happening. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Maureen Atala. Thanks, Danielle. Hi, I'm Maureen. I'm one of the Travel Study Program Coordinators in our office, and I will be discussing the finances section. This section will include um, issues like how much does a program cost and where can I find financial support for my program, including uh, scholarships. So what does the program fee include? Um, your program fee includes your housing, UCLA course tuition, program activities, and excursions, group uh, transportation to sites, and limited group meals. Um, the program fees that you currently see on our website are not up to date, but will be once our program uh, uh, application opens in November. Um, every program is different, um, so just kind of keep these um, numbers in mind. Some programs may include one group meal, others more than one, depending on if you're living in an apartment with a kitchenette, for example. Um, just kind of keep those uh, things in mind. Um, what's not included is your airfare, books, personal expenses and incidentals, um, like museums, extra museums that you choose to do or day trips outside of the city. Um, those things are not included. Um, most of your meals are not included, but again, it de really depends on the type of program and the um, accommodations that are given to you, um, local transit costs and your passport and your visa expenses. So this is just a cost comparison of um, this past summer. Um, each program is different, like I mentioned, depending on a number of factors, such as location, your housing accommodations, whether you're in a hotel or dorms, for instance. Um, hopefully you can kind of find something within your price point. Um, another factor to keep in mind is whether a program is eight units versus 10 units or four weeks versus five weeks. Um, so it just kind of depends. These are just an example of this past summer, like I mentioned. Um, New York is a domestic pro program, so that tends to be a little bit um, less costly than um, an international program, for example. Um, financial aid will take these numbers that we estimate for you and package you based on that. So we do tend to round up just to have you covered. So just keep that in mind as well. So can I use my UCLA financial aid for a study abroad program? The answer is yes. Um, and are, are there scholarships? Also yes. So um, you can apply to scholarships as early as possible. Most UCLA scholarships are awarded twice a year, um, summer and fall, and then winter and spring cycles. Um, where can you learn more? We have a QR code here that you can scan where you can view um, all these seminars on our website to give you a more uh, better understanding of financial aid such as how to make study abroad affordable, study abroad uh, scholarships, and um, how to fund your study abroad program. Uh, like I mentioned, you can apply your summer UCLA financial aid to your travel study programs. If you're a UCLA student, you go to our website for instructions, and you can watch the financial aid presentation um, that would uh, be on our website during GLOW as well. For non-UCLA students, you contact your home institution financial aid office and they will be able to assist you on funding the program. Uh, when do I receive my aid? So funds are typically dispersed five to 10 days prior to your program start date. And summer financial aid is typically loan-based. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind when you are considering applying to a program as well. So there are a number of need-based scholarship opportunities that we offer. Um, applications for IEO scholarships are during winter quarter typically, and we have our travel study scholarship, which provides funding for UCLA students enrolled in a program willing to help promote travel study through either content creation and participation in promotional events um, for our office. And this would cover 50% of your program fee. Um, which is a great award for many students that they take advantage of. Um, we also have other awards based on location, departmental and donor scholarships as well, national awards. Those tend to have early deadlines, so just um, keep a lookout for those. And we constantly update our website um, with scholarships as well. Um, so please um, keep an eye on our uh, website as well.
So how do I pay for my travel study program? Um, so fees are payable through my UCLA. Uh, once your enrollment passes in March, you can then pay your full payment if you're not a financial aid recipient. And your deposit is the first payment towards your program. Um, update, like I mentioned, updated program fees will be posted before our um, program application opens, which would be November 16th. And if you are a financial aid recipient, then you won't need to prepay until your aid is dispersed five days before your program departure. Um, your aid will be credited to your balance first and then your loans to cover your other expenses. The payment deadline is March 22nd if you're not a financial aid recipient. And if you are, then we do have a travel study financial aid application that you must submit to us by March 22nd. Once received, the payment deadline is postponed five days until your program um, departure when financial aid funds are released to your account. So this is a brief finances timeline to kind of help guide you through the process. Um, the very first thing that I want to emphasize is to please uh, apply to your um, apply for your passport as early as possible just to avoid expediting fees. Um, check the validity of your passport now and apply if needed. Um, re we do recommend that you apply November 16th to January, th January 31st for our priority deadline. That way you will hopefully get the program that you wish to attend and join. And then you pay your $300 deposit and that will lock in your spot into the program. You save dates for financial aid application and scholarship deadlines, and then you complete your travel study financial aid application to our office by March 22nd. And then any remaining balance is due um, by then, unless you are a financial aid recipient, which I mentioned before is when your, um, if you are a financial aid recipient, your aid will be dispersed five days before your program departure. So you won't need to pay anything until that time. Okay, now I'll hand off to Erica, who will discuss logistics. Thanks, Maureen. Hi, everyone. My name is Erica Quinones, also a travel study program coordinator here at the IEO. So we're now going to transition into some logistical information about um, details relating to personal travel planning, student accommodations, and academics for your program. All right, so we're going to start with some airfare recommendations. All right, so check your passport expiration date, as Maureen mentioned. Um, if you're considering any study abroad program, it's important that you apply for a passport in the case yours is expired or set to expire in the next year. Please note that if you already have a passport, it must be valid for at least six months after your expected return date from your program. Do keep in mind that processing can, um, there can be delays involved and can take up to 14 weeks from when you submit your application. So it's important to get in that application as soon as possible so you don't have to worry about any expediting fees. As it relates to airfare to and from your program location, we recommend that you do not purchase any flights until you're notified by your travel study coordinator to do so. IEO will let you know by early spring quarter whether you have the green light to purchase your airfare to and from your host country. Additionally, we recommend if possible that when you purchase your flights, you purchase refundable tickets in the case that you um, have any unexpected changes arise that may impact your travel plans. As noted here, financial aid budgets include your flight expenses. However, you will need to purchase your round trip flight ticket before financial aid funds are dispersed. So that's an important note as you start to plan your personal budget during the pre-departure phase. Now, visa recommendations and entering your host country. So we recommend now that you check the consular website to verify any entry requirements to enter your host country for your program of choice. If you need a tourist visa to enter your host country, IO will provide details on how you will need to apply and instructions on how to do so um, upon acceptance. International students will receive letters outlining program information from our office in support of your visa application. One entry requirement I'd like to highlight for summer 2024 is a new requirement for programs based in the EU and entering the EU during the summer. Um, this is called European Travel Information and Authorization System. Here you see it, ETIAS. So this is a new requirement um, for tourists entering the EU, and it will be required for everyone and must be done at a minimum of two weeks prior to departure. 
while this is not a traditional visa, it is required and IEO will send detailed instructions if you do confirm participation in one of our travel study programs in the EU. All right, so now shifting over to housing and accommodations during your program dates. So here are a few notes about accommodations abroad while participating on a travel study program. We have some variety in the types of housing we have for travel study programs next summer. Currently, program accommodations include hotels, uh, homestays, apartments, and student residence halls. Uh, this will vary based on the program. And as you research and compare your program options, please carefully review the on-site section of the program brochure pages to make sure you're fully aware of your program's accommodation details for the entire duration of your program. And if you have any follow-up questions about accommodations during your time on a travel study program, you can always reach out to our office or specific coordinators for that program. Do keep in mind that accommodations are arranged on all students' behalf for the exact dates of the program. So we therefore cannot accommodate early arrivals or late departures. So if you do plan to arrive a little early, um, earlier in the summer to enjoy some time prior to your program start date abroad, you may find your own accommodations leading up to your official check-in time. Another quick note, um, in all housing types, no guests are allowed during your program duration. And again, lastly, you can reach out to our office with any specific questions or um, more specific accommodation requests for us for a particular program, and we can get that started for you. Okay, so academics. Here's some information about receiving academic credit for travel study programs. To start, all travel study students are enrolled in UCLA courses by the IEO. Uh, it's important to note that all travel study courses must be taken for a letter grade, so there's no exceptions to that or petitioning for pass fail option on any of our programs. So you will receive a letter grade um, for any program that you enroll in. If you are a UCLA student, your courses will appear on your UCLA transcript with a letter grade. And summer grades are usually posted to your transcript when fall grades are processed. So that's just something to think about in your planning. Students from other UC campuses will earn general UC credit. If you're a UC student who would like your courses to count towards any particular major minor requirements at your home campus, uh, you can likely petition to your UC home campus directly to acquire particular course equivalencies. And then non-UC students will need to request an official transcript uh, for the transfer of courses for your home institution. Lastly, uh, course syllabi will be available for review through your course website as it becomes available. Um, if you need that at an earlier date, you can always reach out to your coordinator as well as your faculty directors for more information on the day-to-day -day cur curriculum and course syllabi. Uh, your travel study faculty directors will be very involved pre-departure and on-site and can answer any academic questions you have about the pace of the program, um, questions uh, pertaining to the syllabi, um, and other academic topics. All right, so this is a visual for you to see um, the current distribution of programs we have around the world. Um, these represent the countries and cities where travel study has prospective summer faculty-led programs next summer for you to have an idea. Um, we have some sites where there's more than one program in that city. Um, and then we have our one domestic program in New York, as you can see here. All right, so I'm now gonna hand it over to Rory, who will be highlighting three of our program offerings for next summer. Thank you, Erica. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Roy McGillan. I'm one of the other coordinators at the Travel Study Office. And I'm, yes, I'm here to introduce a couple of um, new and returning programs um, offered for summer 2024. Um, if you'd like to learn more about these programs or any of our other programs, um, please scan the QR code that will take you to our website where you can explore the coursework, costs, and other information related to our courses. Um, our first program we'd like to highlight is um, our Spanish program in Buenos Aires, Argentina, taking it to the street. Um, this is a nice mix of learning about Spanish language and culture um, in a very vibrant and diverse city. Um, this will be our first Latin American program in our post-pandemic portfolio, and the professor is very excited to take a group of students coming up this summer. One thing to note about this program is if you're worried about traveling to Europe in the summer, 
um, because Buenos Aires is in the southern hemisphere, uh, it'll actually be a lot cooler than some of our European city uh, offerings. Another program that's coming back is our ELTS Berlin um, German program. Um, this is a little bit different than some of our other programs because you have a little bit more selection of what courses you take. Um, you've also had the opportunity to take a beginning, intermediate, or advanced language course al along with paired with some uh, social science, social studies type courses as well. And then our other program coming back um, is our social science in Wellington, New Zealand. Uh, this is another uh, very interesting course that satisfies your diversity requirement um, for UCLA students. Um, and contains two courses and also has a focus on Maori and indigenous culture in New Zealand. And now I'd uh, like to introduce our first ambassador, Holland Fox. Hi, thank you guys so much. Um, I'm Holland Fox and I went to Rome this summer um, and studied classics. This was a, a 10 unit course. And I'm currently an art and art history major. So I used um, the units to go towards my upper division non-major requirement that I had for the, art, the arts and architecture um, school. You can go to the next slide. So the program was called Classics and History Exploring Ancient Rome. And I loved this program. I think it was, if you're at all interested in history, it covers many, like hundreds of years of history from ancient to medieval to modern. And just because we're in a modern city, you have to, it's, you're surrounded by so many years of history. And so it's really a great program for anyone interested in history. And it's called, it's, Rome is nicknamed the Eternal City. And it's definitely lives up to that name. I mean, you just walk around the streets and there'll be like, portions of ancient buildings tucked into the side of a souvenir shop. It's just a, a very beautiful experience and, and nothing like I've ever seen before. And of course, Italy has a reputation for having the best food in the world. And of course, there's great food everywhere. Um, and Italy definitely has amazing food. Um, I, try, I, I was on a budget, so I tried not to eat out for every meal, but it was tempting. I really wanted to because Every single restaurant, no matter like where you went, just had the most um, delicious food. And you can actually travel around Italy with your free weekends. So there is one trip to Pompeii that was included. Um, and that was south of Rome. So that on the picture on the right, that's Pompeii. But you have three other weekends or technically like two. I'm not, I can't remember, two or three free weekends. So I actually traveled to Florence and I knew friends who traveled to um, Venice. So it was an amazing opportunity. And I went, the professor that I was, I was leading the trip recommended not leaving Italy because of problems getting back. Um, but there's, Italy is a beautiful country and there was a lot to do within that. So yeah, my trips um, were very fun and it's super easy. There's like, high speed trains to most big cities in Italy. So you took those and the train from Rome to Florence was only about an hour and a half. So it was super doable and we all shared an Airbnb, not the whole group, but the ones who went. And um, it was a really amazing opportunity. So as I mentioned, yeah, there's hundreds of years of history in one city. There's really, if you're interested in any part of history, you will be able to do um, learn about that, including like Christian history, um, if that interests you. And non-academic stuff, it really taught me how to travel alone because I, well, there was like about five hours of class time in the day and the weekday. And then after that, you were on your own. So there was a lot of times where I had to figure stuff out for myself. And that was a really big like learning curve, but it was super helpful just to like ground myself and like be confident in my abilities to, you know, take the bus alone and just like talk to people who don't speak English very well. 
And there's a lot of great life lessons to learn just traveling alone. And of course, um, it fulfilled my upper division non major requirements. So it went towards me getting my degree, which was awesome. And yeah, I mean, I definitely would recommend this program. It was an amazing trip. I think Professor Robert Gerville was my professor, but I think he's retiring. But if for some reason he's t teaching this program again, I would 100% recommend it. He's an amazing, very intelligent man. And um, yeah, he um, taught us a great deal about the program and he's so knowledgeable about the city that it was like going with a local. So yeah, that was Rome. And um, I can hand it off to my classmate, Anisha, who um, went to the hog. Um, okay, hi, I'm Anisha. Um, I'm an international development studies and sociology major. And um, over the summer, I studied abroad in The Hague. Um, okay. um, so I think during this program, I grew a lot both um, academically and personally. Um, I think my class really helped me to dive deeper into a topic that was both relevant to the location and also to my future career goals, as The Hague is the home to the International Criminal Court and the International Court of Justice. Um, and it was really interesting to be able to learn about these two um, important international institutions in class um, and then um, uh, visiting them in person. Um, uh, that was like a really great combination. Um, and in addition to that, I think it was really great for me to be able to meet students who were equally as passionate about the topics that we were learning about. So I took the class, the Global Co Governance of International Human Rights, which is housed under the Global Studies Department. And I met a lot of people who were really passionate about human rights and international studies, um, as well as art and architecture and um, other things that we learned while abroad. Um, okay, so here are just a few highlights. Um, here's a picture of me in front of the International Criminal Court, as well as the exterior of the International Court of Justice. Um, and then also a famous Vermeer painting, The Girl with the Pearl Earring um, from the Mort Huys, um, which is one of the many museums I visited in The Hague, um, and also an important part of my academic growth to be able to see the work of many Dutch masters. So I also grew a lot personally as well. Um, I think it was very empowering to be able to travel on my own to plan where I'm going to go eat and what I'm going to go do um, while making friendships rooted in similar interests. Um, so pretty much every day after class, I was able to hop on a train and explore a new part of the Netherlands um, and get more familiar with my host city, The Hague, which houses so much culture from museums to food to gardens. There's really something for everyone. Um, so, for example, I would do group dinners with my friends on the canal or um, take the train to the next town over, um, for example, to go to Delft, um, which is just about like 15 minutes on tram from The Hague. Um, and they have a Saturday market there, which was a really great experience. Um, and the Netherlands is so easy to travel. You don't need to make any overnight plans um, because everything can be done in a day trip. Um, so um, here are some highlights. Um, additionally, um, this is a picture of a traditional Dutch breakfast, um, which I had almost every weekend at one of my favorite cafes. Um, and then a picture of a dinner that the professor hosted for our entire class um, at the end of the program to celebrate our work. Um, and then a view of um, from the Euromast in Rotterdam, which is um, a city a bit south of The Hague um, after a class excursion. Um, so being able to explore the country in this way was unique and exciting. Um, and I really got to um, explore everything from food to museums um, to um, just like meeting um, people who share so many similar interests to me. Um, so thank you for listening to my experience, and I hope that you decide to study abroad and find a program that is the right fit for you. I took away so many amazing memories um, and lots of friendships and people who I will continue to see after the program is over. Um, okay, passing it back to Danielle. Thank you, Anisha and Holland. Really appreciate hearing from your experiences. So I would say, as you've heard, every student thinks their program was the best and their experience was very rewarding. And I can honestly say that in all my time working with Travel Today, I've never had students come away with, with no positive stories from their experience. So 
I know there's a lot of different options on a lot of different programs out there, but we're happy to guide you to what works best for you and help you build your own adventure and make you make your dreams come true. Hopefully. I know that was one uh, of the cases for me when I wanted to study abroad. So if you're wanting to learn more from us, if this taste hopefully gets you interested in our program, you can sign up for our newsletter by uh, scanning this screenshot here to get your QR code on the phone. And the the email updates are not too infre or not too frequent. Don't worry, you're not gonna clog up your inbox, but it'll just give you some news, kind of remind you of all the deadlines and let you know about other opportunities, scholarships, things like that that come up through our office. And if you need to follow us on social media to get more updates, you can. We're present on a lot of different platforms. We're also on Reddit and other places. Um, you can also check in with us in person or virtually. We have drop-in advising regularly. We also can schedule one-on-one -on -one appointments. Typically in the fall, there's general advisors who can meet with students to talk about the full range of options. But then once if you narrow it down, you really know, I just have to talk to Erica about Granada. Uh, we can connect with you that way as well. Uh, there's also lots of different information sessions. The faculty often will host different info sessions in around October, November, and usually January. So look out for those. Our calendar will be updated whenever we do have sessions. So if you want to pin that or save that link to our calendar, I would recommend it. And you can see here's our email and phone. And then if anyone has any final questions, if you want to start putting those into the chat, we're going to stick around for just a couple more minutes here. Uh, the recording is going to go silent for a couple of minutes, so we can't actually talk to answer you back, but we're still here in the chat for a couple in case there's anything. Uh, if you don't have any questions, feel free to go ahead and sign off now, carry about your day. But again, thank you so much. We really hope to hear from you, and we look forward to hosting you on a travel study program in the future. Okay, if you're still typing any final questions in the chat, this recording is going to end in about 10 seconds. So we will follow up with you by email if you haven't gotten a response from us, or you can reach out to us at ucla.ieo.ucla.edu.
Okay. Thank you.